The next item of business is a motion from the Committee for Culture, Arts and Leisure on the report of its inquiry into inclusion in the arts of working class communities. The Business Committee has agreed to allow up to two hours for this debate. The proposer will have ten minutes to propose, and the, propose the motion and ten minutes to wind. All other speakers will have five minutes. Clark, please read the motion. That this Assembly approves the report of the Committee for Culture, Arts and Leisure on its inquiry into inclusion in the arts of working class communities, NIA Report 298 11 to 16, and calls on the Minister of Culture, Arts and Leisure to implement the recommendations contained in the report. I call the Chairperson of the Committee for Culture, Arts and Leisure, Mr Nelson McCausland, to move the motion. Mr McCausland. Thank you, uh, Mr uh, Deputy Speaker. It is a great pleasure to rise today as the chairperson to move this motion on the Culture, Arts and Leisure Committee's inquiry into inclusion in the arts of working class communities. And I would like to thank the other members of the committee and the committee staff for the considerable work that they have put into what is an important inquiry report. Additionally, I want to thank the Minister for agreeing to respond today. I would also like to thank all the individuals and groups who contributed to the inquiry with either written submissions or giving evidence before the committee. And to those who attended the discussion events held by the committee at the Flowerfield Arts Centre in Port Stewart and the Lyric Theatre in Belfast. I'm sure that all the members here this afternoon will agree that it's vital that everyone in Northern Ireland has equal access to the arts, irrespective of their socio-economic status. The arts and culture can and do enrich all our <coughs> lives. The committee's core motivation for undertaking this inquiry is the members' strong belief in the benefits that participation and inclusion in arts activity can bring to individuals and communities. Such benefits include health and well-being, the development of personal and community capacity and skills, and a range of other socio-economic benefits. There has been much said about the Committee's use of the phrase working class communities in the title of the inquiry. It has been suggested that a more technical term should have been used. However, the committee agreed that the term still had great resonance and meaning. Therefore, members felt it was appropriate to use it when referring to disadvantaged, marginalised or deprived communities. It is also a phrase that people can identify with regarding their origins. They may no longer <coughs> live in a working class community, however, those origins shape their attitudes towards the arts and culture. The committee has also not used any specific index or matrix to measure deprivation, as members wanted the inquiry to be more about people's views and ideas than where they fitted into an index. The committee believes that everyone in the community should have regular access to the arts and the benefits these provide. The committee does not believe that access to the arts and culture should be diluted for working class communities. The arts should be part of the everyday lives of all of the people who live here in Northern Ireland. However, the committee also acknowledges that people cannot and should not be forced to engage with arts and culture. The ideal is that people are exposed to arts and culture from an early age and can then see what aspects they are particularly drawn to. The committee is firmly of the belief that the best way to ensure that everyone has access to and an understanding of the arts is to develop a wide-ranging executive strategy that cuts across a range of departments and provides access point to the arts and culture through an individual's life and in a variety of contexts. To this end, the committee welcomes the Minister for Culture, Arts and Leisure's consultation on a culture and arts strategy, and the inquiry report's uh, recommendations were written with such a strategy in mind. Research that the committee has commissioned strongly suggests that inclusion in the arts is lower for those in disadvantaged communities. However, the evidence provided to this inquiry suggests that the situation is much more complex. Research has tended to focus on ticketed events where uh, information can be more easily gathered and does not deal with more informal, unticketed arts events. The committee believes that working class communities are often more likely to engage with informal, unticketed arts and culture events and that members of these communities would not necessarily regard these events as the arts, rather seeing them as part of their cultural identity. Members are clear that there is a great deal of arts and cultural activity going on in these communities. However, this inquiry has a greater focus on how working class communities are engaged by arts and cultural venues. 
The inquiry examined the accessibility and outreach activity of arts venues and bodies and how these impact on inclusion in the arts and working class communities. We sought to pinpoint and understand barriers to inclusion in the arts faced by folk from these communities and to seek ways to overcome these. As I've already indicated, the committee heard from a wide range of bodies, organisations, including key arts venues across Northern Ireland. And we also heard from our arts establishment, as well as executive departments, on what they're doing to widen access to the arts and include the communities that we are referring to. Obviously, a key part of the inquiry was about hearing from arts and culture practitioners within disadvantaged communities. And the committee is very grateful to them for sharing their insight and experiences. The committee has identified a number of broad barriers to communities being included in the arts, and those were economic financial barriers, barriers linked to geography or location, educational barriers, barriers around the availability and structure of funding for the sector, and barriers with respect to awareness and information. Lack of value placed on the arts and community, cultural or psychological barriers. That's not an exhaustive list, and it's clear some barriers are beyond the control of the communities, and therefore government intervention is required. There are also many barriers that can only be eroded with the active cooperation of the communities and individuals in question. While it's clear that there is a vibrant arts and culture scene in Northern Ireland, both in rural and urban areas, the committee believes that arts and culture can and should be part of the work carried out by government on a daily basis, both centrally and locally. That's why the creation of an executive arts and culture strategy is the key recommendation of this inquiry and why the majority of the other recommendations are based on the development of such a strategy. It's apparent that while there are complex sets of barriers to inclusion, um, that the uh, committee believes it's important that the issue is uh, considered uh, and that rural proofing takes place to provide greater opportunities for inclusion uh, in arts and cultural activities in rural areas. In the same vein, the committee is conscious that those with special needs and or disabilities face particular challenges in access and engaging with the arts, and that's another issue that needs to be taken forward. The committee is aware that there is a great deal of publicly owned art that is never accessible to view, and the evidence received from this inquiry showed, that, uh, showed the committee that there is a need for art to be brought to people and to be available in places that they access on a daily basis, such as schools, libraries, or other public buildings. We recognize the difficulties faced in that, but think that it is an important opportunity. Partnership is necessary to ensure that access to and participation in the arts and culture is widened out as much as possible. Partnership between the executive departments and so on. And all these partnerships must be based on clearly understood aims, objectives and outcomes. Um, Mr. Deputy Speaker, uh, exposure to the arts and cultural activity from an early age is key. And the committee is clear that children and young people must have regularly planned access to the arts and cultural experiences. Access at an early age is more likely to allow an interest to develop and more likely to provide uh, migration uh, or mitigation against family or community antipathy or apathy towards the arts. Mr. Speaker, in essence, the committee believes that the arts must be democratized to maximize inclusion. As I've already outlined, the strategy that we are encouraging to be brought forward should seek to creatively bring publicly owned art to public buildings and spaces to allow all communities to enjoy and be inspired by art. Particular focus being given to schools, libraries, and other cultural and community hubs. Um, in the report, there are a number of very detailed and specific recommendations. We would encourage the minister to consider these in detail and incorporate them into her strategy. Um, as the executive summary says, there are no simple answers. But I want, uh, having spoken there as the uh, chair of the committee, also to make some personal observations uh, about uh, this matter uh, as a, a DUP representative on the committee. We were disappointed, and I, as a party, very disappointed by the cancellation of funding for musical instruments for bands because we believe that that is one of the most important sectors within uh, many uh, working class communities in that there are 20, 25,000 people learning music week by week, practicing music week by week in uh, bands. And yet this opportunity to support that sector through funding for instruments 
um, was abandoned by the minister. We felt that that, uh, feel that that's a very wrong decision, a retrograde step, and one that was totally unjustified because there was always a very good take-up and a good geographical, including a rural spread, uh, for that allocation. As regards the Minister's report that she's bringing forward, the Culture Arts Strategy that is out to consultation at the moment, I would just make two observations. The first is that it does seem somewhat vague and vacuous, uh, and that more substantial document could have gone out to consultation. And secondly, we be I believe as a party that it's important that cultural rights and equality are embedded into this, and there is not sufficient evidence of that having been taken into account. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, can I uh, commend the report uh, to the uh, House and uh, look forward to the debate? Thank you. Ms. Rosie McCarley. Um, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, August Karm Falcha, Rev. Jesh Lorch, or Aaron Runshaw, and you, I welcome the opportunity to speak on this motion today. And this motion uh, today uh, comes from the Committee Inquiry into Inclusion in the Arts of Working Class Communities. It arose from a sense that people living in areas of deprivation were less likely to have access to or participate in activity uh, which comes under the broad description of arts. Uh, so, Marcinda, Latesti Enu, August Latori, Jarfaka, Awinshamak, Hui and Kosha, Amon Visrakan. So, to test that, to seek some positive outcomes, the committee inquiry was undertaken. It is a fairly widely held opinion that participation in the arts, whatever the arts might mean for the individual, can make a positive contribution to a person's sense of well being and good health. It is certainly my view that no one in society should be excluded from the arts. It should be available to be enjoyed by everyone, regardless of background, gender, or indeed any of the other Section 75 categories. Throughout the course of the inquiry, evidence was taken from a wide range of individuals and organisations, including statutory, voluntary and community. August Mowais done a Dini August done a group of Shinda Glack Parch Shaw and I thank the people who participated and, and made contributions to the inquiry. The presentations were comprehensive and impressive in terms of what is being done to promote the arts. We heard from the main theatres as well as community theatre. We learned about all the different musical genre and the many other numerous enterprises and community organisations that make artistic contributions in our society. There were, there were main themes that emerged from the inquiry which were non-surprising. These included barriers which came under the general headings of financial, geographic, educational and funding other issues related to disabilities and special needs, rural specific concerns and general awareness. Uh, yeah. I thank the member for uh, um, giving way. Will the member agree with me that in the cases of uh, some of the funding bodies, such as the Arts Council, that there is a geographical barrier to the funding of the likes? And I think a couple of years ago of the uh, Ulster Fla, uh, which was held and given two years in a row, and uh, the, the, the organisers really had a struggle there to have their, uh, their case recognised for funding uh, because it wasn't, it wasn't seen as important, despite the fact that there were 30,000 people attended, including the Minister, on both occasions. Members, the next well, as an as an incursion. I thank the member for that input, and and yes, I agree. I mean, certainly um, among the issues that need to be addressed, where there is different uh, understand and different perception of what 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 happens to be regarded as arts, and then how that is supported. Uh, so, uh, yes. The, the committee has produced a report which we are asking the Assembly to approve today. While I do endorse the report, I have to express my disappointment over one regrettable aspect. During one evidence session, I was prevented by the chairperson from asking questions which I believe were very pertinent. I sought to have this incident specified in the report, but the majority of the committee voted against this, and as a result, I have had to settle for a link to an amendment in the appendix, and I will read out the amendment. As part of the inquiry, the Confederation of Ulster Bands gave evidence to the committee. During their presentation, they raised the issue that the media tended to present them in a negative way. Some members wish to explore this issue with them to see if perhaps they agreed that there were perceptions of them which arose as a result of the actions of some of their band members. A total of three committee members were prevented by the chairperson from pursuing this line of questioning and as a result, we feel we have missed out on some very valuable information which we would have added to the report. 
We would have appreciated hearing the Confederation's opinions on the behaviour of some specific bands over recent years, which leads many people, and not just the media, to take a negative view of them. This may have a bearing on the feelings of some bands they are excluded from the arts. The incidents I referred to were the disgraceful behaviour of some marching band members who provocatively displayed the notorious famine song outside St Patrick's Church and incidents which occurred at Trudell Avenue showing band members involved in serious rioting and violent attacks. These were all, no, no, these were all shown on the media and I wish to ask the Confederation of Ulster Bands for their views on that behaviour and how it may have contributed to a negative media perception and to a feeling of being excluded from the arts. But as I said, we were prevented from asking those pertinent questions. Nevertheless, Notwithstanding that, the committee report contains a total of 22 recommendations which, if implemented, could go some way to improving the situation for inclusion of working class communities in the arts. I wish to emphasise the first of these, which calls for an executive arts and culture strategy to be brought forward, which would have the full support of all the executive departments. The strategy would be comprehensive and have coordinated targets, key performance indicators and a monitoring and review process. A consultation into an arts and culture strategy is currently underway within the department, and we would hope that this would provide a vehicle to achieve the requirements of recommendation one of the report. Some other recommendations focus on the need to address transport issues, the provision of musical instruments for all genre of music, and the idea of making art accessible and available by bringing it into public spaces and places for all to enjoy. We'll bring our remarks to close. In conclusion, I believe that there should be no exclusion felt by any community, working class or otherwise, from the arts, and I believe that the recommendations in this committee report will help to address this. Mullaman Turishk. Karen Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And as a member of the Culture, Arts and Leisure Committee, I'm supportive of this report and hope the Minister will take the necessary measures to ensure that the recommendations are implemented in full. The benefits of participating or engaging within the arts are universally recognised, from tackling social occlusion to promoting mental and emotional well-being. The arts bring a positive contribution to our society and to the lives of the individuals. The inquiry was undertaken to address the inequalities faced by those who lived in deprived areas. Research has shown that adult participation rates in the arts were 31% lower in the most deprived areas. The research also confirmed that participation was lower amongst those who had never worked, had no qualifications or had a limiting or long-term illness. I, along with my party members, welcome all initiatives to ensure that the arts can be assessed and enjoyed by every individual. The main recommendation for an, arts for an executive arts and culture strategy with targets and measurable outcomes similar to the programme for government would be a positive step, and I am sure this would be welcomed by the arts and cultural organisations across the region. The purpose of an executive-led strategy is to ensure that the strategy will be meaningful with sufficient support and resources from all departments. Throughout the duration of the inquiry, committee members had the opportunity to engage and listen to the needs, the concerns, hopes and aspirations of organisations and individuals involved in the arts. It is important that any strategy is backed and guided by those experts who know the industry, industry best. I strongly support the need for such a strategy to be rural-proofed, to ensure that the arts are performed in rural societies, particularly disadvantaged rural areas. The report recognises that affordable and suitable transport provision can be a barrier to individuals. The transport barrier can, of course, apply to people who live in urban zones, but it is a particular challenge for those who live in the rural community. I am pleased that the report identifies the role of our libraries, that our role the role our libraries can play in delivering arts and cultural experiences to rural audiences. Libraries need to be used as multi-purpose art spaces. Indeed, many already art house, or house arts and cultural events, including the annually run March Creativity Month, but there are opportunities to develop this further. I would hope that this is ever-expanding potential of our libraries is recognised by the Minister and our executive colleagues, so that going forward we will not see any further reduction in the services at opening hours. There are many public buildings which should uh, continue to be used for arts and cultural purposes, including our museums, our schools, the town halls and more. 
Using these public buildings as a multi-purpose centre would inevitably increase the numbers of people, young and old, using the buildings. And I would once again repeat my call to have automated external defibrillators present in all public buildings, and we should be working towards this goal. It is also vitally important that these buildings are catered for people with disabilities to ensure everyone can, can get involved in the arts. Servicing a building for people with disabilities not only means ensuring that it is fully wheelchair accessible, but they should have aids for people who are blind, suffering from hearing loss, people who are autistic and more. The purpose of the inquiry and now the report before us is to bring that a positive change which would see working class communities have easy access to the arts. But we also need everyone uh, to make the arts available to absolutely everyone. Another recommendation from the report, if introduced, would see publicly owned art brought to public buildings, spaces so that all communities can enjoy. This would be a welcomed initiative that would help to develop uh, the stock of the art displayed in cities, towns and hamlets across the region, while also giving communities access to locally um, relevant art. The, the report uh, further recommends the need for funding structure for the sector to be changed, particularly the use of short-length funding styles, which, while can be uh, beneficial for one of the pro for one-off projects, they fail to protect the long-term health and well-being of arts and cultural organisations. <coughs> Mr. Deputy Speaker, I would be remiss of me not to pay tribute to the hard work and the dedication of the committee clerk and to the whole committee support team throughout this inquiry. They are constant support to all the members of the committee and I would like to put that on record and also uh, to put on record the dedication of the previous chairperson of the CAL committee for the introduction of this inquiry. Thank you. Call Mr. Leslie Cree. Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker. In October 2013, the committee agreed to conduct an inquiry into inclusion in the arts of working class communities. This followed on from the committee's inquiry into maximizing the potential of creative industries. This advantage was of particular concern. Much evidence was taken from a wide range of stakeholders over a considerable period of time. In 2015, the committee agreed to include the Rural Development Programme with respect to how the arts and culture can be supported in rural communities. Targeted visits and focus groups were also used to understand the nature of the problems and the relationship between poverty and the arts. The Minister for the Department of Culture, Arts and Leisure during her briefing fully supported the value of the arts. She stated, and I quote, that the arts are not a luxury to be enjoyed by an elite few. They should be enjoyed by all who wish to enjoy them, regardless of community background, age, gender, disability, race, sexual orientation, political opinion, or income level. End of quote. Mr. Deputy Speaker, in my opinion, this statement sums it up pretty well. It has to be said that all the existing bodies involved in the arts and culture do perform well, but everyone accepts that an overall strategy is necessary at executive level to cater for the arts and culture going forward. This strategy needs to be thoroughly rural-proofed and adequately resourced to ensure that disadvantaged rural communities are able to participate fully. Disability is also a major issue. There are 22 recommendations in the committee's report and I fully commend them to the House. There are a number of barriers and they have been referred to. A number of bar uh, barriers to working class communities have been included in the arts. These include economic financial barriers, educational barriers, awareness and information, community, cultural or psychological barriers. However, there is no shortage of arts and cultural activity going on, and it is often first class. It is also spread across Northern Ireland, both in rural and in urban areas. There is a need for a coordinated and overarching approach to the arts and culture, and this must come from the executive. The committee's findings identified the need to have professional arts practitioners going into communities to engage directly with groups and with individuals. This is a labour and resource intensive and must be funded over a reasonable period to allow it to be embedded and for a worthwhile legacy to be achieved. There is also a need to provide recognisable careers in these sectors, which in turn would assist the creative industries. Mr Deputy Speaker, whilst I believe that the committee has produced a good report, it is not the end of the matter. 
More work will be necessary in the future to improve culture and arts in Northern Ireland. It is a continuing process. Mr Deputy Speaker, I would close by paying credit to the committee staff <clears throat> for their excellent work in producing this report and commend it to the House. Thank you. Call Ms Anna Liu. Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, I'm not a member of the Cow Committee, but I wish to speak uh, on behalf of the Alliance Party in support of this motion. Uh, in 2012, I was delighted to help the Arts Council to launch the first ever intercultural arts strategy. This was a significant step in addressing the barriers facing ethnic minority groups here in Northern Ireland. I have witnessed firsthand the positive impact that arts initiatives can have at a grassroots level. Whilst I welcome the report's overarching recommendation that an executive arts and culture strategy is brought forward, I do have some reservations as to how this will work given the potential difficulties in getting the buy-in from different departments. It's essential, as recommended, that this strategy does not duplicate existing art strategies and it should have coordinated targets, key performance indicators and a monitoring and review process to evaluate outcomes. It needs also uh, to be rural proved and adequately funded too. I particularly welcome the recommendation that the strategy should also seek to bring publicly owned arts to public buildings and spaces like libraries and schools so that all communities can enjoy and be inspired by local art. On a recent Environment Committee visit to the warehouse for the Ulster Museum, we saw thousands and thousands of archived artwork stole away. And they should see the light of day whenever possible. I welcome the recommendation that the strategy seeks to forge partnerships with theatres and theatre companies to facilitate them working with disadvantaged communities. It's a good suggestion that the strategy will facilitate research and address the specific difficulties that these communities face in accessing the arts and cultural activities. I agree that proper consultation with community groups in disadvantaged areas must be made, and this should be aimed at both rural and urban areas. I think it's reasonable that the report <coughs> proposes exploring the idea of social clauses for publicly funded performance venues, facilitating young people and musical groups or bands in disadvantaged communities. It's also important to look at how the provision of costly equipment, such as musical instruments, might be aided. I welcome this very comprehensive report, which has considered barriers to the arts from many angles. In it are recommendations that the strategy addresses transportation, education, technology, data gathering, and volunteering. It's timely that there are recommendations that the strategy is underpinned by a strategic partnership with local councils to ensure a more joined up approach regarding uh, the arts as local councils are in the process of developing their community plan. Short-term funding has been a problem for voluntary organizations to plan and develop in recent years. The report made a valid point in relation to the issue of the short cycles of funding which makes planning and development of projects difficult. I support the committee's suggestion that the strategy examines the use of tiered funding periods, which take account of the levels of deprivation in the target community and the need for legacy work. The strategy supporting the development of funding between business and arts is vital, particularly those in disadvantaged communities. 
consideration must be given regarding how InvestNI might encourage participation when providing foreign direct investment and other grants. I support the committee's view that representation from disadvantaged communities on board should also be looked at, as these communities are often not heard in up. the development of public policies. Thank you. Call Mr. Gordon Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I too welcome the opportunity to speak to the House today on, the, on this report and uh, the important report that it is into the inclusion of the arts of working class communities. There is no doubt around the value of the arts in Northern Ireland today, and I believe that the value has, now, has not yet reached its full potential. And I do commend the efforts of my colleague, Mr. William Humphrey, who was very keen to get this inquiry underway and certainly was one of those that initiated it long before my time on the committee. The arts do provide a sense of social inclusion, engagement, community cohesion, and can provide many lasting health and wellbeing improvements for any community or individual. I believe this is a very useful inquiry and I welcome the publication of this report, including the key summary of recommendations. Throughout the course of this inquiry, we have heard from a wide range of stakeholders and agencies within the arts sector, and I would like to thank them for taking part in this inquiry, and to the committee staff for collating this information and putting together this report. All of us as members from across Northern Ireland can point to valuable examples where the arts are an important part of civic life. I have only to look at the, the Ulster Folk and Transport Museum within my own constituency as a centre of excellence which showcases the very best of what we have to offer, with historical artefacts complemented by art, artist displays throughout. Other examples within my own constituency include the new space facility at Cirque, the South Eastern Regional College, which we visited as a committee, which is a top-class facility which focuses on the performing arts, including a seated theatre and a full range of recording studios, a theatre which has a multiple number of uses. Indeed, it is the first public facility we have now in North Down acting as a theatre. So that type of facility is most welcome and broadens the, the whole outreach trying to uh, come across, right across all the various communities. Events such as Culture Night, I believe, <coughs> are again a great way to try and mobilise communities and get engaged in the arts. And even the local success we have within our own area where we've had the Hollywood Culture Night, where thousands of people descend upon the high street and enjoy a full range of culture, arts performances and live music from early afternoon right through to the early hours. We have Ulster Scots music, we've even got Irish dancing, folk music. We have the full range in North Down. This event has become a highlight of the local calendar and showcases the very best of local talent. I think one of the ingredients which makes this, up, makes this to be such a success is the involvement of the community organised from the ground up by the community for the community. One of the main themes which came through within our inquiry was the very valuable role of volunteers. Many organisations, clubs and societies would not flourish, let alone survive, was it <coughs> not for the dedication and commitment of volunteers from all classes and from all backgrounds. Volunteers must be supported and cherished and they must be given their place. There is also a key role for our schools and libraries, as other members have mentioned, in terms of making sure young people are properly engaged and understand what the arts are about. Our libraries play very much part of our community and provide space for such events. And again, in, in North Down, Bangor and Hollywood, the libraries are an excellent job and the staff are most helpful for such events, with arts displays and community outreach for activities for young people. People from all age, ages visit our libraries and engage in, in, in many art-based events. There is no doubt that there is a level of disengagement with some of our working class communities and what is known as the arts. And I think more needs to be done to encourage and to educate children from an early age about what the arts really are. Again, another example of how uh, the Ulster Orchestra has broadened its appeal. It has brought the music out to communities 
out to different venues, to smaller mm -hmm. venues, and engaged as part of their marketing and engaged as part of their outreach to schools and to various groups and to various fairs and organisations, something to be commended. There is some com confusion as to what exactly is included within the arts, and I think the leads, that this lead needs to be, it needs to be real leadership shown and the disconnect that is felt within some of our various communities. The marching band was mentioned earlier, Mr. Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I would fully support the role that they play. Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Call Mr. Basil McRae. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, worthy though it is, a committee motion and report could make the discovery of life on Mars sound dull. The thing I like about the arts is it is so fantastic. The, the highlight for me, I don't know if it was for others, was when we went to see rice being cooked on the stage. Do you remember that? With all of the drummers going on, 12 out of 15 in the world, we sat mesmerised for an hour and a half, and we didn't even know the tune. Fantastic. And I went through, I went through, I looked at some of the, see, uh, Mr. Dunn is uh, laughing there. I was down at his great theatre. I was down there to see a play by Lawrence McKeown. And uh, those you pass on the street, fantastic. Absolutely thought-provoking. This is what we want to see. I've also seen Fly Me to the Moon. That was good. That was Mary Jones. Really interesting moral questions about how do we deal with these things. And see, that's Mr. Deputy Speaker about the arts, because the arts unite, they inspire, they innovate, they bring us together. We should do more of it. We should look at the jobs that they give, the things that they do to bring us all together, how they enhance tourism, all of these good things. So, some other things that I enjoyed in my tour through this, I got up all through the house. That was good. That was at the Crescent Arts Theatre. Enjoyed that. And just recently, we had down from the Playhouse in Derry, London Derry, the Playhouse. Brilliant. It was the hospital. What you can expect if you have got learning disabilities when you're in a hospital. They put it on themselves, they produced it themselves, Lilliput Productions, absolutely fantastic. It just shows you how the arts really inspire us, what we could do. What other things did I see? Burns Night, Burns Night at the Ulster Hall. The only thing that put me off slightly was that our chairman was sat in front of me and trying to sort of just get in the way of my view. But actually, apart from that, it was really good. And some of us even tried to take photographs. I'm not sure if you try to take photographs, Chairman, through you, Deputy Speaker, but it was wonderful. It is what we should be expressing to people. Look how good the arts are. So when you get to this issue about you know, inclusion, I think the biggest thing that I found, and this probably shows what a, sort of a, a, a minnow I am on these things, is that so many people were doing so much already. I went to see the Belfast Circus. I have to say to you, I didn't really think that the circus was really art. Well, boy, did I have my eyes opened when I went down and saw it and all of the things that they could do. And, you know, anything, anything that inspires young people, that gives them confidence, that lets them believe themselves, whether it is riding a unicycle or being able to go up and down one of those ropes, is fantastic. And I really think that we should be the champions for the arts. It is not party political. It is not even from one culture. share with him his enthusiasm for many of those events that he talked about. But surely would the member agree with me that all uh, arts venues as such should have uh, a relatively neutral name uh, attached to them uh, and that they can be shared uh, by all. And I refer, of course, to an attempt to try to change the name of the Rue Valley Arts and Cultural Centre in Rue Valley. Mm -hmm. the, the, the member may be surprised to know that I'm actually aware of the issue. And maybe we should just do the big hole beside and call it the Alexander or whatever it is. I don't care. Do you know what it really matters to me? It's not about buildings. You need to have buildings. It's about people engaging, whether it's voluntary, whether it's professional. One of the best things that I was ever involved with, the thing that got me started in this, was the spelling bee. And a great actor from these places, from Belfast Met, actually come through, Jared McCabe, got me up on the stage and made me look an ass. Nicely. Nicely. But it was brilliant. It was brilliant. You get this engagement, you get people involved. And so this is the bit that I have to say 
Of course there will be different cultural interpretations. I spoke to the minister actually and said about Lawrence McKeown's uh, play, and I have to say, I didn't even know who Lawrence McKeown was. But I, stood there. but I thought his play was good, and I understood that he knew what he was talking about, and I thought it was really challenging. And you know what? There are other things. On my desk, as just before I come down, Queens are putting forward a fusion um, play. It's going to involve people from a flute band mixing with people with traditional music. All of these issues are really good. You are not trying to supplant somebody else's culture. You're trying to get involved in it, to understand it, to be part of it. And so all I really wanted to do in this, and I do think I owe some members an apology, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, because it was me that put the hand up and said, I think we should have two hours for this debate, because I don't get in all the time. Looking around me, I realised that my concern was perhaps a little exaggerated, that I needn't have worried about being able to get a chance to say. But you know what? One of the greatest things that I saw, and the Minister herself said it, when we had the rally in defence of the arts, I think I'm right in saying, you correct me if I'm wrong, isn't it good that we get cross-party support? I want to have cross-party support for the arts. It should be neutral, it should be inclusive, it should be for everybody. And the biggest problem that we have is we've got to get people that may not think that arts is for them to go along. Because if they go along, they absolutely enjoy it, they feel it's part Members of it, and they will do stopped. more. And on that basis, I commend the Clark and his team for the excellent, if slightly lengthy, report that they produced. Call the Minister to respond. Gormagat, uh, Lars Khan, Kolyar, August, Falchum Rov, and Jess Frega, a horse, or in Jess Brackshaw. I thank the Deputy. Or the the Deputy Speaker, uh, and also welcome the opportunity to respond to this debate. Uh, maybe less energetic than Basel, but it was certainly refreshing, and I think it's heartfelt. And let me also place uh, my, on the record my uh, thanks to the Chair and the members, and indeed the staff of the committee, uh, for the, the work, the lengthy work that they did in bringing this report forward. I very much welcome the report. I think it's a great opportunity that the report's publication coincides with the work currently undergoing in my department uh, in regarding uh, strategy, and I certainly will consider uh, and carefully consider the, re the report's recommendations. I've read some uh, so far, but I will make a commitment to feed them into the development of the strategy. It also goes without saying, but I would also like to put it in a record, also that arts is and should be part of everyday life. And I think we all mean everyone's life every day. It's not just to say that anyone is forced to engage in the arts. I think that's already been mentioned. It's quite the opposite. And the opportunity for engagement should be available to everyone so they can exercise their choice. The idea of quality arts or excellence is often viewed as a contentious subject, and I believe that the quality of arts engagement is a subjective and indeed a personal experience for each individual. The role of government, in my opinion, is to ensure that we have a properly funded and resourced arts and cultural sector that is capable of delivering quality arts and culture. I've often acknowledged, and indeed does the inquiry report, that there is a great deal of arts and cultural activity going on in working class communities, and indeed right across the north and this island. I would also suggest that is true of many communities, should it be the communities in rural areas, should it be ethnic minorities, LGBT, Irish, Ulster, Scots. I do appreciate, however, that the committee inquiry particularly focused on working class communities, and it has explained its reasons for doing so, and acknowledges the limitations of this scope. I note the committee's comments, that it is for those developing the strategy to decide on specific indices to gauge deprivation and disadvantage. And helpfully, I also think the inquiries focus on understanding the barriers to the exclusion and indeed, more importantly, the inclusion into arts. I think that's been very helpful. This has been a vexed question for a long time and one that focuses on the that was one of the focuses of the consultation into the strategy for culture and arts. 
I also find it inter interesting to note that some of the barriers identified in the committee's report, for example, looked at areas around economic and financial, they looked at geographic, geography and indeed the location, educational avail availability of structure of funding, awareness and information. It is too early to report on any considered analysis, the consultation response, responses to the strategy as it just closed and Friday passed. However, I can say that these particular barriers certainly resonate with many of the people who I have had discussions with and certainly a lot of the feedback that I have received when meeting groups uh, in the community and indeed from arts and cultural organisations. I am delighted that all of this evidence, in my view, lends great support and impetus to ensuring that a strategy for culture and arts is taken forward and embedded in future programmes for government. I welcome the committee's endorsement that there is a need for an overarching culture and arts strategy supported and resourced by the executive and, and its departments and its arm's length bodies. And I look forward to doing all I can to make that happen before I leave the department. The committee puts forward the case for the need for rural proofing in any culture and arts strategy. And I'd like to take this opportunity to confirm to members that I have already received a commitment from the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development to facilitate any assessment on the impact on rural areas. I recognise rural proofing as a key component to ensure inequality for everyone. The committee also highlighted the challenges faced by those with special needs and disabilities. Fundamental to the culture and arts strategy is the principle of equality. And I will ensure that all I can do will be done to help fulfil this <coughs> principle and many others. As the committee also points out, partnerships with councils are essential to ensure effective delivery of the strategy. And again, I support the principle of partnership and agree it must be inherent in, future, in the future delivery of the strategy. I would also like to take the opportunity to clarify ownership of the strategy. I think we all should. Essentially, this will be an overarching departmental executive-owned strategy. The effective delivery of the strategy will require collaborative partnerships throughout government and indeed its arm's length bodies and beyond. I want to turn briefly now to the concept of publicly owned art. I don't particularly want to give the impression of valuing one particular genre of arts and culture over another, but I have noted with interest the committee's views on the accessibility of public owned art. I also believe that museums, museums have a particular obligation to make as much of its holdings accessible to the public as possible, provided that the environmental safety and security conditions are met, and I think we would all agree that that's a responsible step. It is my view that libraries, schools and other public venues at the heart of our local communities can and should be used for exhibiting museums items. That is why I welcome the Out and About programme, which opens up access to museums collections that was launched in September of last year in collaboration with libraries. This innovative programme widens access to some fascinating collections and brings them directly into communities. This is a great step forward. The committee also talks a lot about partnerships in the report of partnerships between departments, government, arts and cultural sectors, venues and communities, local government and arts and businesses. I concur entirely with their view. I believe it is critical that those charged with government funding can ensure that it is dispersed strategically through appropriate funding structures. The, underpin the underpinning objective and duty is to obtain value for money that can be best achieved by effective partnerships, in my opinion. One of the critical findings in the committee's report, and again a theme that I believe is central to the uh, culture and arts strategy, is a theme that revolves around exposure to arts and culture from an early age. Certainly this notion echoes strongly with discussions that have been held as part of the consultation. The role of education as one example, both in terms of introducing our children to culture and arts from an early age that delivers value and benefits to society and facilitating the opportunity to engage through lifelong learning cannot, in my opinion, be underestimated. Establishing and respecting the core foundation of the value of arts and culture will help in the transition into career pathways for our young people. For those reasons, I believe integration and investment of our arts and culture throughout education curriculum is essential. The committee report also touches on the availability of information both in 
relation to data and accessibility of information, and I agree these are important areas that will require further examination in developing a culture and art strategy. Volunteering has been mentioned by all members, is recognised in the committee's inquiry, and I absolutely agree, absolutely agree that a culture and art strategy needs to fully recognise the importance of the third sector. Returning to the focus of the committee's inquiry, and like the committee, I accept there are no simple answers to ensuring greater social inclusion in the arts. I firmly believe that through an agree, agreed executive strategy for culture and arts is an essential step to ensuring that government policy and funding is, it, is brought forward and it will be brought forward on the basis that it will improve our society as set out in the report and indeed the consultation for everyone. As I said at the outset, I will give careful consideration to all the report's recommendations and certainly taking forward the strategy. I just want to bring one of my last remarks, and I'm assuming that this is a typo on page 11, when it talks about it is only through this carefully considered framework and through taking a strategic approach that disadvantaged communities will be presented with greater opportunities to respect tarts and cultural activity. I'm assuming it's as dull as a typo rather than maybe an opening up or a new departure for some of our committee members. I also support the motion and indeed uh, the uh, amendment in, in the committee report and I believe it's an excellent job done. Thank you very much. Call Mr William Humphrey to conclude and wind up the debate on the motion. Take from looking, looking to, the, to the side of the, the house, the, the colour of Mr Hall's face suggests it's not tarts. Um, can I thank um, all of the uh, speakers for the, the debate? Um, I'm pleased to, to wind in this culture, arts and leisure debate into an inquiry into the inclusion of uh, arts in the working class communities. I'd like to start by thanking our members for their contribution to today's debate and indeed through the process that we've had over the last year and a half. I'd also like to thank the Minister for responding to the debate, and uh, I think it has been a debate that has been measured and a debate that has been constructive and most useful. I'd also like to echo the Chair's remarks in, in thanking uh, the Committee, uh, Clark and his team, and of course to Dan Hull, the Committee's researcher. Thank you very much to, to Mr Hull and his team. Um, <clears throat> Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, it's clear that the Committee's inquiry has proved to be a very valuable piece of work. I know that the committee will work hard with the minister to ensure that its recommendations, all 22 of them, are implemented. I would also like to uh, begin by making a few points about the inquiry. The committee chairman is absolutely right in stating that the committee believes the best way to ensure that working class communities are included in the arts is through a comprehensive arts and cultural strategy that is owned, supported, uh, facilitated and resourced by all of the executive departments. It should operate in a similar way to the programme for government with coordinated targets, key performance indicators and a monitoring and review process. Another key point is to stress the need to bring publicly owned art to places where disadvantaged communities can enjoy it and be inspired by it. Schools and libraries would make excellent exhibition spaces, as would arts clubs and cultural hubs. But I would also throw in there that hospitals too would be a, a very good place for art to be placed. Partnerships can be created between museums, schools, libraries to bring arts and culture to all of our young people. It is clear that theatres and theatre companies must work with the disadvantaged communities to support their inclusion in the arts. However, this work needs to be properly resourced and should have agreed outcomes. Community groups have a vital role to play in the development of the executive arts and cultural strategy. On many occasions, the committee has considered the important role of local councils and what they can do and bring to the arts and culture in terms of disadvantaged communities. A coordinated strategy for the arts and culture must see a better, more considered partnership being established between central and local government and between councils themselves. It is the committee's belief that an early introduction to the arts and culture is essential for our young people. This introduction should be sustained by school curriculum at all key stages in terms of education and has a key role to play in any executive arts and culture strategy. Once our young people have developed a taste for the arts and culture, it is important that they are provided with clear pathways into the arts and culture focused careers through the expansion of existing apprenticeships and the creation of new ones. 
We must also examine creative ways to use uh, digital technology, gaming, etc., and existing bodies which promote the application of technology, as well as existing activity in the creative industries here to further the development uh, of employment in that sector. Well, to give away, yeah. I just wonder if his uh, use of technology would include the use of Periscope? I leave that to the expert, Basil. The committee found that funding is a, is a key issue, particularly in terms of short length of cycles for funding, which makes the development of project legacy difficult. We believe there should be a tiered funding periods, which take into account the levels of deprivation in the target community and the need for legacy work. The committee would also suggest that an executive arts and cultural uh, strategy supports the development of funding and in-kind relationships between business and arts and cultural organisations, particularly those in disadvantaged communities. Invest Northern Ireland should encourage participation in these relationships when providing foreign direct investment and other grants to their clients. Mr. Uh, De Deputy Speaker, I'd also like to reflect on other speakers and the contributions they made to the debate. The Chairman, Mr McCausland, talked about uh, the term working class, and we were very determined at the outset that working class would be used as a term uh, in terms of this, this piece of work. Um, arts uh, should be part of everyday lives for all people, he said, and exposure to the arts uh, at early age is key. Public access to the arts, because much of it is hidden, is absolutely essential. He also talked about the de democratisation of the arts, and he also appealed for the Minister to restore the funding for musical instruments for bands. Ms McCorley uh, endorsed the report and raised the issue of, of uh, being unable with two colleagues to raise questions about uh, her concerns and their concerns about marching bands. I have to say, from my perspective, it was the view that I took of that committee, I think the, the view that the majority of members of that committee, of the committee took was that the questions and the line of question being pursued was not relevant to the work of the committee in terms of this report. Ms McKevitt talked about rural proofing and transportation being a barrier. She also talked about libraries being important in terms of a cultural approach to including all in the community. Mr Cree talked about the recommendations and again he also mentioned the barriers that were in front of people and their participation in the arts and talked about uh, professional arts practitioners. Ms Lowe talked about libraries and schools, that there was a full consultation necessary and joined up with local government. Gordon Dunn welcomed the report. He talked about the Ulster Folk and Transport Museum. He gave us a vir virtual tour of North Down and talked about cultural nights and Hollywood. And basically he said, if you're not going away from Northern Ireland holiday this year, you should stay on holiday in North yeah, Down. Yeah. He also made mention about the Ulster Orchestra and how important that it was. Mr McRae talked about arts and how the Arts Unite community, how it can enhance tourism. And uh, he made it cl very clearly a pitch for more tickets for members to attend events uh, uh, as well. Um, he also said that uh, there was cross-party support, cross support for the arts across the chamber. The minister, in her remarks, um, said that uh, the arts should be part of everyone's everyday life. An inquiry ha had, that the inquiry had been helpful in terms of its inclusivity. Welcome the committee's recommendations and will do all she can to make it happen. She also talked about rural proofing and the accountability of publicly owned art and in terms of it being put on display. And also talked about the uh, interrogation of an arts, uh, the inclusion sorry, of arts in the curriculum. If I may, Chair, make some uh, remarks as a, a member of, of the Democratic Unionist Party. Uh, finally, I, I want to pay tribute to Michelle McElveen, our former chair, when I approached her about this piece of work uh, and thank her for her support uh, and for the committee for supporting uh, the, the piece of work as we went forward. I do think that there are a number of contributions which actually stood out for me from practitioners who came in front of the committee, which actually, for me, said, suggested that we were doing the right thing. Because when East Belfast Arts were in, they talked about people wouldn't cross the river to go into the city centre to go to venues. New Lodge Arts talked about people from, from that area in, in the lower part of North Belfast feeling detached and needing transportation to go to uh, the MAC. Bobby Foster uh, from the Spectrum Centre in Shankle talked about the Protestant com community didn't recognise its culture as arts, but recognised it as culture. Um, and again, I would appeal 
on, on that issue to the Minister to restore the issue of funding for instruments for marching bands. I would congratulate the MAC, the Lyric, the Ulster Orchestra and Flower Fields in Port Stewart for the work that they have done in terms of connecting with the community and encouraging people to get involved using various different uh, routes to reach out to working class communities and young people within those working class communities. <coughs> Excuse me. When I initially called for this inquiry, I was criticised by some of the great and the good in the, the arts world, criticised by, by some key arts organisations in this uh, city. However, uh, I have met with others and spoken with others who were very supportive and most encouraging. Indeed, when I heard of the Ulster Orchestra and the Arts Council making approaches to organisations in my, my constituency in the Shankill and, and practising in schools uh, and working and, and, and rehearsing in the, the Spectrum Centre and approaches being made from the Arts Council, I knew that actually a nerve had been touched. Significant uh, investments were made in the, the culture and arts infrastructure in this city going back a number of years by regional government and Belfast City Council in terms of the MAC, the Lyric, the Ulster Hall, and etc. It is important that all of our people benefit from the opportunity and, and to benefit from these multi-million pound investments. I hope that, that with this inquiry will ensure that those living in areas such as Ballyca Martin, Ballymacarrat, Ballymurphy, Shankill, Woodville, Ardoin, New Lodge, etc. will have access to these facilities on an ongoing basis and on a regular basis. For too long, working class communities have been not part of the arts, but apart from it. So I want to thank everyone for their contribution. I want to commend the piece of work done, the 22 recommendations in the report. I welcome the report. It's comprehensive, it's wide ranging, it's inclusive. And I have to say, it's a report that is for all. If we are serious about building a united community, a tolerant society, with the implementation of this report is essential, and I commend it to the House. The question is that the motion of standing on the order paper be agreed. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. Item 7 in the order paper is the adjournment. The question is that the Assembly do now adjourn. The Assembly is adjourned.